Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Film Learner Masterclass. Now since we've covered the basics of shooting your footage, I think it's high time we talked about some post-production. In other words, let's talk about editing. Now editing isn't the easiest thing to sum up as it involves a lot of personal touches and can be very individual to each editor. For example, one editor might prefer a scene opening with a wide shot, while another might like a close-up. One might hold on one actor's performance longer than another, well you get the idea. So what exactly are we doing when we are editing? Well, the most basic explanation is that we're assembling the film from what was shot. It's the editor's job to take all of those individual shots of a scene, the close-ups, the medium shots, wide shots, handheld, every single angle and take, and make sense of it. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it is remarkably hard. The best analogy I liken it to is putting together a puzzle. Now in the case of say a big budget or even an independent film, they generally have their own editor that works with the director and producers to craft the final cut of the film. But you and me, we don't have that, because you know, we ain't got money for that. So let's look at some examples. We'll watch it first and then we'll talk about it. Are you tired of getting your fat lazy ass out of bed? Dude, what? Dude, what? Dude, what? What would be the most totally awesome thing ever in the history of all mankind to be on? That's easy. Chicks with three tits. I'm being serious, man! Way cooler than that! The uh, real life Pokemon? Bingo! No way! You have a Pokemon? Nope. We both have Pokemon. You realize what this means, don't you? I do, sir. Pokemon Battle! Although we do have to read these instructions first. Aw oh, man! Alright, let's fight! As we can see in this example here, the conversation is very fast paced so the editing is cutting quickly to maintain the same energy. The moment the instructions came out, it grinds to a halt, slowing down to illustrate both the character's frustration and that time is now passing slower. So you see, the pace at which you edit your footage can directly complement the performances on screen. Let's take a look at another example, this time building some tension. Check it out dude, my zombie brain mold and my heart mold. We totally gotta make these into gummies. Don't you wanna, you know, Get cleaned up first? Yeah, you're right, dude. What the hell was I thinking? I better wash my hands. You do remember shitting your pants, right? Oh, yeah. Excuse me a minute. I might grab a shower. Yeah, that'd be good. Man, I can't believe I forgot I shit my pants. Yeah, dude, that's pretty <laughs> So as you saw, we cut away from the action to a slow moving empty hallway, but use the audio from our actors to illustrate that they're nearby. We then cut to another slow moving shot of the closet, and then just as we reveal the zombie, we cut directly to that title sequence. This shows the audience that there is a threat to our characters, but at the same time racks up the suspense because the immediate payoff isn't shown. They only know something might happen, and that's all. Let's try another example, this time an action and a reaction. This one's from my Spider-Man film learning episode. All right, here goes. Hmm. Nice shooting, Tex. Oh crap. Much better. So as you see, I shoot at the webs. You see my initial reaction, but we don't cut right away so it's implied that something isn't right. We then cut to Doug's reaction, and the payoff is that I suck at shooting the web. He then reacts by saying, nah shooting Tex. We then cut back to me being annoyed, shooting at a web, that's the action, and then immediately cut back to Doug to see the web stick to his nose. Again, the reaction. We then finally cut back to me throwing him behind me, and then we hold on that shot till he falls down and we get my final smile after his line is said. Now I could have cut to Doug hitting the ground and saying his line, hell, I even shot it. But the reason I held on this shot is because we don't need to see him hit the ground. I felt the scene was funnier by staying on me and showing my full reaction to the situation and using sound effects and pre-recorded audio of Doug talking. We still see him fall out of the shot, hear the crunch as he hits the floor, and my reaction implies what's happened. Nobody doubts that he hit the floor but we didn't have to show it. Now cutting action and reactions isn't an easy concept to explain because the rules can change in every scene you shoot. Let's take another example from my video Virtual Van Damme. Hmm? Oh, 
gosh. I should mention that my friend is Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't think he's getting up. Nope, can't help him now. How about lunch? So while I only implied that Doug fell in the earlier scene, in this scene I inserted a shot of Doug knocked out on the floor after Jean-Claude's kick to further point out that Doug is completely knocked out and to pay off the following joke from Mo about lunch. Some other examples can include showing someone shooting a weapon and showing the result of that action, or you might imply the reaction by holding that shot and showing the actor's on-screen reaction. But like I said, this is a tough line to walk, but with enough practice, you'll know which path to take. Here's a good bit of homework for you. Write a simple conversation between two people. Shoot it at three different angles, an over-the-shoulder A side, a B side, and a straight-on wide shot. Shoot as many takes as you like and import all of that into your editing software and cut it together. Use different takes to assemble the conversation and watch it. Now here's the tricky part. Take that same footage and do it again, but try to make it look completely different. It'll take some time, but you can do it. Unfortunately, there's truly only one way to get better at editing, guys, and that's practice. You just gotta keep doing it and doing it, and sooner or later, it becomes second nature. You see when a scene needs a few frames cut out, or needs overlapping audio, or a gratuitous butt shot. And the thong? It makes me feel fancy. You'll know when to use music to heighten emotion or create excitement, or a sound effect to add a comedic punch to a scene that's lacking. And like any skill, nobody's great at it right out of the gate. I know I wasn't, and I'm still learning every time I step into the studio. So don't give up if you make something that doesn't work, or someone says that it's no good. Take that feedback on, go back to the drawing board, and make something better. Because like it or not, the only person standing in your way from getting better is you. But that's my time, gang. I know this was a longer episode, but editing is special to me, and I wanted to give it the attention it deserves. As always, gang, if you enjoyed the episode, please like and share it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and check out all three seasons of Film Learning below. Here's the Facebook and the Twitter, and I'll see you next week for some color correction.